Well, what's going on, Stu, on this podcast, listeners? I'm excited about today's episode. Um, I got the opportunity to sit down with a guy by the name of Cody Anderson. Cody is a CrossFitter, um, and more importantly, he is a Jesus uh, follower. So uh, I reached out to him and said, hey, you don't know me. Um, I don't know you other than what I see from social media. Would you be interested in coming on to my podcast to talk about the importance of faith and fitness within your own life and sharing your story with us? So uh, he graciously said yes, and this is an amazing conversation. So uh, here you go. Let's dive into this episode talking with Cody Anderson on faith and fitness. Well, today I am hanging out with Cody Anderson, um, who I have been following from afar for a few years now. Uh, Cody is a CrossFitter, and more importantly than that, uh, I have been just even watching a little bit of his faith journey, uh, just kind of coming out and what it is that he does. And I think that's probably the thing that I love most about Cody, what I've seen from you from afar is like, when we talk about what is discipleship and what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus, like we, like the faith community has kind of boiled it down to there's got to be these programs and steps and all that kind of stuff in order to share Jesus with others. Um, But really, the idea of just being a disciple who makes disciples is just, this is what I do. And my faith naturally overflows from that. And it creates opportunities in order to make Jesus known. And dude, that's what I've seen from you from afar is like, this dude loves Jesus and it comes out through his passions of fitness and CrossFit and all that kind of stuff. But instead of me telling everybody else about who you are, Cody, why don't we hear it from yourself? Tell us a little bit of who Cody Anderson is. Yeah, sure. Awesome. I appreciate that. It's like totally the way I want to come across. So I'm glad, glad it comes across that way. Um, yeah, for people who don't know me, um, my name's Cody Anderson. I've, I've competed at the CrossFit Games a couple times. Probably what I'm best known for is this CrossFit stuff. Um, what do you want me to start with? Just a little bit about myself? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, CrossFit World, love the Lord, grew up um, grew up Christian, but kind of the uh, Christmas and Easter Christians. Um, so we were forced to go to church as kids, but didn't really have like a relationship with God that, you know, I really valued very much. Um, and, uh, didn't really start taking anything seriously until after high school. We kind of like, you know, stopped going to church and was, you know, like this. And, um, I won't get too into the weeds about my whole life story, but, uh, just went to like a, you know, really small conference. They're hosting a conference in like a middle school classroom, uh, after hours, um, where I live and there's maybe like 30 people there. And that was my first experience with like, you know, the prophetic and people just sharing about the miraculous and stuff. And so I think, you know, our generation, especially, and just, I mean, maybe everybody, but I feel like people are really hungry for something real. And so I was just kind of like told like God is there, but you know, you just kind of have to have to take it at, you know, based on what I'm telling you kind of thing. Um, and so when I really had a, an experience where I felt like I really experienced the Lord for the first time, I was like, okay, like I want this and, um, kind of started running after him at that point. And then, um, yeah, I, I was doing CrossFit at the time. And, but you know, after, after that focus definitely shifted towards like, it is Jesus, I just want to do whatever you want me to do. And, um, you know, the whole, like going through your twenties of trying to figure out your purpose and everything, um, hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, fir- I first qualified for the CrossFit Games in 2014. And, you know, it's like kind of one of my favorite parts of my testimony because I, f- I feel like um, it's just the way God works uh, to where you have to be willing to let stuff go before he'll actually give you the thing that you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, you know, I'd love to, to do well in CrossFit, but I didn't expect to make it to the, you know, the top level or anything like that. And so I was like, Jesus, just like, you know, whatever – whatever glorifies you or, you know, the, the humble prayer. Um, but yeah, you know, my heart was really in a position where I just wanted to please the Lord and, and live for him. And, and so, you know, at the end of the weekend there is finishing up second and qualifying for the CrossFit games and 
Mm -hmm. Um, the rest is kind of history after that, you know, there've been a lot of cool stories in between, but that's kind of like where I got started and introduced to the Lord and kind of got my feet in the, I dipped my toes in the water with CrossFit. Yeah, dude. Awesome. So how long after, um, how long after you got like serious with your relationship with the Lord? So like you said, it's easy to just have somebody say like, Hey, there's this dude named Jesus. I go to church. I got a personal relationship with him. So there's like this face of value level, like what you were talking about. And then there's like that in depth, like, man, Jesus totally intersected and interrupted my life. Um, so where does that happen in comparison to like you wanting to get to the CrossFit games? Like, was there a long distance between that or was it pretty back to back? Um, that was pretty, there, there's pretty big gap. So yeah, I, I, I like officially, you know, when I say like I got saved, that was probably like 19 years old. Okay. Um, and then first time qualifying for the games, I think I was like, it was just before turning 22. So it was like two and a half, three years. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, and like the funny thing is like, I, I didn't really have any aspirations to compete at the games. I didn't really believe in myself enough. You know, you're watching these people mm-hmm. on YouTube or TV or whatever. And you're like, wow, it's like, look at all the cool Reebok stuff they're getting for free. And, um, <laughs> you know, uh, See, I didn't think I had what it took. And so it came as a huge surprise to me. And that was, I mean, like even, you know, once you become a Christian, it's not like all of your problems are solved. So, I mean, I still had a lot of self-worth issues and disbelief in myself even after, you know, I felt like it was just a fluke that I qualified. So, um, so yeah, a little bit of a journey there. But yeah, it was, uh, you know, two, two and a half, three years of just like, I'm going to put the Lord first. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but hopefully he guides me there and, um, yeah, got me there eventually. Yeah. So were you already doing CrossFit, like your fitness journey? Were you like always doing CrossFit? Were you doing like bodybuilding stuff that eventually <laughs> turned into more like functional fitness or, and, and as part of that, like, uh, were the moment that you got into CrossFit, were you like, eventually I'd like to get here if that's possible. Or was it always just like, ah, eh, this is just a hobby that I'm going to do. Um, yeah, so I, uh, well, I was a gymnast before, so I okay. did gymnastics until I was like 12 years old. That's like where my athletic background is. Um, and then I wanted to join the military after, after high school. So I started like running and doing pushups and stuff, but never like spent a lot of time in the gym, <clears throat> like a traditional gym, anything like that. And so, yeah, when I was kind of getting interested in the military, my mom signed me up for, for CrossFit. That was like my first exposure hmm. to it. Um, and then yeah, I just fell in love with the sport, did my first competition in like six months and did like, you know, bottom 10 people or something. Uh, wasn't very good right off the bat, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and so, yeah, I just kept kind of doing that and um, got my, you know, level one certification within a year of starting and had an opportunity to start coaching people. So, um, yeah, kind of just organically grew into something that I, uh, that I was able to do more. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I think that way, you know, it kind of gave me more time to train and I was just really liking it. Um, and so I think when you really enjoy something you're doing, you can get good at it without really, without that being the ultimate goal, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Like I said, there's no, like, I'm going to make it to the CrossFit games someday, which I guess is kind of rare. Most people are like, I want to do this and then they make it happen. But it was kind of. Uh, it was just grace. Like God kind of just set it in my lap and I was like, okay, well, thank you. Yeah. So did you ever do, you never did the military? No, no, that would, um, uh, yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's great because like that, I think that's the best part that people need to hear about like our stories is, um, like ironically enough, I just did an episode prior to this one where I'm talking about that. Like I just came back from a conference <clears throat> and one of the pastors that was there speaking at this conference was really talking about that fact that, you know, we, <clears throat> we tend to cultivate our stories, our testimonies, which is like our greatest weapon that Jesus has given us to advance his kingdom and attack the enemy. And we kind of chalk it up to, oh, I wasn't walking with Jesus and then Jesus interrupted my life and I've been walking with him since. And when we share our testimonies, that's kind of how we chalk it up to you. Like you said, it's never like an easy journey after that point, but we just kind of mm-hmm. leave it as, and now I'm walking with them. 
Um, and the point that this pastor was making was that our testimony is made fresh and new every single day. And we need to start treating it as such because, you know, um, God's always moving and he's always working in our lives. And if we just leave it as like, this is something that happened a long time ago or something that happened once, then we kind of turn this living God into a stagnant <clears throat> God who's not very active in our lives. And that's what I love about even just the sharing of testimonies. Like, you, like here's Cody saying, I'm a gymnast that's going to go into the military. And God's saying, I've got something completely different in mind for you. And uh, if you're faithful to me in the process, there's a platform that's going to come with it that you, as you've been saying, like you never expected to have happened. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, re I really like that. It's, you know, so yeah, I think we do. We limit our testimony to like how I got saved versus there's a lot more. Uh, to the story than just that so yeah i like that yeah yeah so um so you competed in the cross of games you get to this level of competition that only like not probably not even a percentage of the world is in so you're this uh you know top of the crop cream of the crop type of athlete competing in a weekend's worth of events that no normal sane <clears throat> individual uh, does for fun when your heart is ready to explode out of your chest and you're leaving everything on the field and you're lifting weights that weigh twice as much as you do over your head. Like, it's just crazy, man. This is crazy <laughs> stuff. Nobody does this yeah. on purpose. Only a crazy individual does. Um, but you're doing it and you're, you're walking out there carrying the banner of Jesus uh, with you into the field. Like, what was that like for you as a person of faith going into this, uh, platformed event, you know, uh, did, yeah. Was it, I guess, was it widely accepted? Like, was it, um, were you finding yourself in a lion's den for the most part with some of the other athletes that are there? Like, what was it like carrying that into that environment? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it definitely wasn't the lion's den. Um, you know, I think like now that I'm older, I think I realize it's like, I shouldn't make such a big deal. And like, I, I would be really nervous about sharing my faith when I was younger. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and you almost like you, you, uh, have the assumption that like people don't want to hear what you have to say before even like trying. Um, mm. and so I think it was a little bit of that. Uh, I mean, there are still a couple cool moments where, you know, I didn't go there to like, like I'm going to evangelize all the other athletes kind of thing. You know, I was very shy, um, still kind of am, but, uh, yeah, so I, I kind of, I kind of kept to myself, made like a couple friends. People were nice to me noticed I was like the shy young kid and, you know, like Jason Kalipa comes over and introduces himself to me. And, um, so yeah, that, that, that was nice. But yeah, and there were a couple times, you know, where I did well on an event. They're like, how do you get your strength? And I'm like, well, thank you for asking. Like, you know, I think, it, you know, it comes from the Lord. But, um, yeah. but yeah, that was kind of the extent of like my, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going out there and like, can I pray for you or anything like that? And there are a couple moments where he did that, you know, later on as I got a little more bold, but, um, but yeah, that first year was just, you know, you're just competing at the CrossFit games and it's just the experience and just trying to lean on the Lord. Um, I think it taught me a lot to like lean on the Lord personally, I think was mm -hmm. probably the biggest, uh, biggest learning experience that first year. Yeah. So you first qualified for the games in 2014. Mm -hmm. How many times have you qualified for the games? Uh, three times. Three times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the most recent, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Most recent, did you qualify 2021? 2018 was the last time I competed. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, I feel like it was a lot sooner than that. I kind of a washed up oh. athlete now. Oh, <laughs> it's like stop. five years ago. I'm just kidding, bro. If your washed upness could be my washed upness, I would be totally happy with that <laughs> strength. I'm just saying. Um, okay, so you last competed 2018. So, uh, uh, so three years. So when you were doing that, um, did you kind of find as you went back year after year for those three years that just being Cody and who God's created you to be and called you to be, did you just find that easier and easier stepping into it? Um, and did even you being who you are, did it provide more opportunities for you to share your faith with some of the other athletes and the coaches that were there? <clears throat> yeah, I think so for sure. Like, um, 
you know, the, the process of qualifications changes a little bit since then. But, you know, before that we had like regionals, that was like the stage right before the games. Um, and so we would organize, you know, me and a couple other buddies that I knew were believers. We'd be like, Hey, if anybody wants to like pray before the event, like let's meet here in the morning before it kicks off. And so they're kind of cool opportunities to do stuff like that. And then, you know, a lot of cool conversations over social media, you know, people, uh, you know, dropping in the messages and just, you know, having questions about the Bible and faith. And, um, so I've been, yeah, some cool opportunities there. Um, probably a little bit too long to get into, but I ended up getting connected with some people at YWAM and we went to Nepal and trekked some Bibles, you know, over the Himalayas there, um, mm. with another athlete, Jacob Hepner. But, um, hmm. but yeah, cause some super cool opportunities there. And, um, yeah, kind of just like you were saying, like just being who you are and letting that kind of be the thing that, you know, if people are naturally drawn to you because of the, you know, just the field that you're in, you can use that as a ministry opportunity and you don't have to like force anything upon people. It can just be organic. And that's where I've seen the most, most fruit coming out of my life, I think. Yeah, for sure. So out of the games, uh, we already mentioned that you, you own, operate CrossFit Magnify, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you get into that? Like was Tony in a box prior to you qualifying or did that just kind of happen out of you being that CrossFit athlete? Uh, so yeah, it definitely happened out of just being an athlete. So okay. really like took it to the next level. Like 2018 was my best year. So 15, 16 didn't make the games. I missed one year. I missed qualifying by one point, um, <laughs> which is pretty hard, but um <laughs> Sorry, my dog's freaking out underneath me right here. Um, no, that's good. But yeah, and so then requalified in 2017. That was kind of going to be my last, like, dude, if I don't qualify, that's three years in a row. I'm just going to, you know, move on with my life. And so that kind of, like, was the, you know, resurgence of, you know, passion. Like, okay, I'm, like, I'm still going to do this. And so I started working with a coach for the first time after that. Um, mm-hmm. Her name was Amy. And um, so we worked together the whole, like, you know, after the 2017 games, and so for that whole 2018 season and, you know, really dialed in strength and lifting and, um, started training like, you know, an actual professional athlete. Um, and so then we opened the gym together after that 2018, uh, game. So okay. late 20, I think, yeah, late 2018, we opened the gym and she, she kind of stepped away two years ago or so. Uh, so this has been me, but, um, yeah, even that, I mean, was you know, kind of a pretty awesome God thing in itself. You know, it was like thought about, should I open a CrossFit gym or should I buy like the one I was working out before? And it -hmm. just never seemed to be a good opportunity or a right time. And, you know, the quality that we were able to start with because Amy and her husband had owned a gym for 10 years in California before this, um, basically like the gym now that I own is much better because I waited, you know, for the right partnership and, and everything beforehand. So yeah, it's just all trust God and it, it kind of, it works out better than you think it will. Yeah. Uh, so do you bring like the faith <clears throat> aspect into your gym or like, cause I, cause I know like there are some gyms that I've like, I've dropped in some on some gyms that they're like, you walk in and here's a Bible verse over here. They'll pray before like class begins, all that kind of stuff. Like, do you bring that into yours or you're like, Hey, uh, I'm Cody, you know, you'll eventually get to know that I'm a follower of Jesus. If you have questions, you can ask me, but let's keep CrossFit and Jesus separate. Or do you, do they just kind of all mix in with each other? Yeah, we definitely don't. I mean, I don't have like Bible verses in the wall or like, I'm not making people listen to worship music while they work out or anything like that. <laughs> um, you know, it's, if that's, if that's what people want to do, I think it's fine. I'm sure people are successful and, you know, in doing that, but, um, you know, like we, yeah, well, first of all, it's a business. So, you know, we're not like trying to push people away or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's kind of the latter of what you said, like, it should come out naturally, I think, if, you know, I believe in the Lord, and I'm trying to follow him. And so yeah, over over the years, you know, we started like a, a guys group. Um, you know, we meet together on Wednesday nights at the gym and started with like two guys. And then, you know, at one point, we had like 15 people coming. Um, and just going through, you know, a couple different discipleship things, you know, went through the book of John and I don't know if you've heard of the purple book, but like a basic mm-hmm. kind of just discipleship manual we've been kind of working through. And, um, 
so yeah, I think just, just letting stuff evolve organically. And then, I mean, the ultimate idea, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's like I could reach out to a hundred plus people myself, but really the goal would be to, you know, invest in a couple people and then they invest in a couple people and, you know, that's kind of the Jesus disciples making disciples model. So, um, that's kind of the vision there and it's cool to see it. Um, kind of cool to see it happening. Yeah. So when I started doing CrossFit a couple of years ago and right now I'm not, I'm kind of back into like bodybuilding type <coughs> stuff because I've got a garage gym. You and I were talking about it before we press record and look, man, in Wisconsin, negative degree, degree temperatures working oh. out and a garage <laughs> gym is just like not, not worth it. Um, but when I was doing it, uh, I quickly found myself doing this weird comparison of like, man, I can see where like my faith journey with Jesus and what I'm learning here in the, in the gym and the, and you know, the box, um, they kind of go hand in hand. Like I even made a joke one time with, a with one of the associate pastors that I was working with a few years ago. I was like, dude, you know that you're, uh, uh what was this? Like, you know that you're fit for the cross when you're cross fit. Mm-hmm. You know, like just ridiculous stuff like that. But it's true. Like, you know, I started understanding like there's, uh, you know, like Jesus says, he models this prayer for, you know, the disciples and really for us of like, give us this day our daily bread, right? Um, which is really a call back to uh, the Israelites in uh, the wandering times in Exodus. Mm-hmm. Um, but really like just the idea of like, man, God's got something for us for today. Um, and it might be like a really hard journey that we have to persevere through and push through. And I found myself in moments like doing a CrossFit workout, like doing the workout of the day. I'm like, man, this is going to suck. This is going to suck really bad. Like I know that my lungs are about to burn and my heart's going to try to bust out of my chest. But at the end of it, you know, when you're making the sweat angel on the floor, you're like, dude, I'm so glad that I pushed through that. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad that I did that journey. And uh, I started seeing like a correlation between the two of like, man, God's got something for me today and it might suck. But if I can just push through and and do this and be faithful in the process, I bet you I'm going to look back on this and go, man, that was so much fun and that was so worth it. Um, but my question for you and that is like, do you see for yourself, like as you've become more and more of this person of like, I'm not Cody Anderson, the CrossFitter, but I'm Cody Anderson, the Jesus follower who does CrossFit and does fitness as a whole. Like, do you, like, have you seen those two worlds just start to collide and intersect with each other in a major way where you're like, yeah, this, this applies here and vice versa? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think if you're a healthy, you know, if you have healthy spirituality, like you should be, you know a believer first that does other things, you know? So, um, I mean, it's hard not to let your identity get wrapped up in what you do, especially as like a guy, you know, we're very like thing driven or, you know, what do you do? Um, it's like the first question you ask people, but, um, but yeah, I think that was, I, I kind of knew, you know, like I've been big on identity since, you know, pretty early on in my journey. So I think I was always kind of, wary of, of slipping into that direction and it's still you know it's still slipped up and stuff sometimes you know social media becomes too important or mm. um or whatever but uh but yeah so i mean I, I think yeah those things like do intersect a little bit but like careful not to let your value come from um what you're doing you know whether for me you know my performance in the sport or for, you know for anybody just your value comes from the fact that jesus died on a cross for you and not um, not anything else. So I don't know. Does that kind of answer the question or did I, yeah, okay. dude. yeah, I'll take it. <clears throat> um, so what, what's the plans moving forward for you? Like you haven't competed since 2018. Um, but you, you're owning it, you're operating a box. Like, are you working with other athletes who have the, uh, desire to compete do you plan on finding yourself back in madison anytime soon so you and i can meet up in person and get a cup of coffee <laughs> for real like what, cool. what's the plans moving <clears throat> forward um yeah uh 
no, no plans to compete in CrossFit anymore personally. Um, okay. If there are people out there listening that want to work together, I'd be happy to coach you. But um, yeah, I mean, right now the focus is shifting towards uh, another sport. I kind of posted a little bit about it on my page and got shadow banned for it. So now I have a different Instagram page, but it's to tactical games. Um, oh, okay. So it's like CrossFit plus guns. Um, and so, yeah, I'd never really shot a gun before until the last year. And I had a buddy, you know, who was, uh, he was special forces in the army. And so he was just kind of teaching me the ropes. And we did this competition together. And so I did two of those last year and it seems to be a pretty growing sport. So that's kind of where I'm like investing my competitive energy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, while still, you know, owning a CrossFit gym and, you know, the CrossFit part still prepares you well physically. So still, still staying in shape and staying competitive shape for that. But, um, but yeah, I feel like that CrossFit um, part of the journey is over for now. You know, maybe that'll change. But um, I feel happy about you know what I was able to do and really enjoying what I'm doing now. So just kind of yeah. see where that takes me. I'm just I'm just waiting for the day that I see you post on social media that you've got some mustache company that wants you to go represent them out at the CrossFit games. <laughs> dude, that's for anybody who's just listening to this and not watching. Uh, Cause I post this on YouTube. Like Cody's got, I'm you got a mustache that I'm just absolutely envious of. bro. <laughs> like how long have you been working on that? Uh, I was like 2050. Yeah. Like eight years now. I think I've Whew. had this It's Man. a lot of work. You had to be okay with looking really bad for like a year before <laughs> you have anything respectable. For me, at least. I'll have good, like, facial hair genetics. Yeah, yeah. I understand that struggle. But, yeah, man, I remember that first time that I saw your mustache. was like, dude, I, that's a great mustache game right there, for sure. That was the same way so, I felt. I, I met a guy with a mustache, and I was like, I want to look like that. <laughs> so I was like, let's see what I can do. And it looked really bad for a long time, but, yeah. Yeah. Dude, us, <clears throat> us guys are just so weird. What we think is just so cool. But, anyways, um yeah, but so, so another thing of your story um, that I absolutely loved um, that I didn't know about was the fact that you went and got coaching in order to really get back into, you know, qualifying for the games. But what I think that I love about that is for even just followers, like that's discipleship, right? Like there's somebody who is able to speak into you and that performance side in order to help you um, achieve a next level um, in order to qualify for your fitness journey for the CrossFit Games. But um, that also applies even for us on a spiritual level as well, right? Like that's the whole point of discipleship is like somebody in order to do life with somebody who's able to get you to that next level um, that you can't get there on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, so, dude, I give, like, kudos even to you on that to be able to look then go, like, I don't think that the story is done yet, so I need to find somebody who's going to help me get to that next level. Um, and I just hope, like, and I, I don't know if you want to speak into that at all, like, like when you decided that you needed coaching or when you had that revelation that you needed coaching to get there. Um, but, like, have you even seen that play out on your faith <laughs> journey as well? Of like, oh, I need a coaching yeah. here, so coaching on this side probably as well. Yeah, I mean, I never really thought about, you know, exactly that correlation between the physical and the spiritual. But, um, but yeah, I totally, totally agree. You know, Christianity is not just, I think, if you believe that you can just, like, have your relationship with Jesus and you don't need to go to church, you don't need to have a relationship with other believers, I think you're deceived and you're missing out on, you know, a big part of what, God has for you and a big part of the gospel. Um, So I would encourage anybody listening, if you don't go to church, go to church and find a, find a family to plug into. But, um, and then, yeah, in the context of discipleship, you know, like I, I worked very closely with my, you know, my pastor for years. I was a worship leader for a long time and helped out with a youth group. And so, and that's when I can point to like the times of my most rapid spiritual growth was when I had somebody that I was, not just who was investing with me, but I was like serving alongside him too, you know? So you have like, I know a lot of people do the, you know, the analogy, you've got a hand up and a hand down, you know, I have somebody that's pouring into me and then I'm pouring into other people. Um, So yeah, I think that's a really healthy thing to, to do. Um, And, you know, sometimes seasons, seasons change, you know, my pastor is not here anymore. They moved to Texas and um, Mm. 
you know, I don't necessarily have directly somebody who's like discipling me right now, but I still have people that I could call and I know it probably won't be like that forever. But um, yeah, if you don't have that kind of thing in your life, I think it's definitely a thing to pray about. And um, yeah, I mean, the same goes for, you know, the sports side of it. Like if you, if there's somebody that knows more than you, um, you know, and you, you feel like they, they have something to teach you, you should seek out instruction from them because it'll make you better. Yeah, definitely. All right, Cody, as we wrap this thing up, somebody's listening to this um, and they want to get a hold of you, hear more <clears throat> of your story, or just want to know, like, man, I too have dreams of competing at the CrossFit Games one day, and now I need that coach or somebody to kind of help with the blueprints, or they're hearing this and going, dude, I love the boldness that Cody had to take his faith wherever it is that he goes. And I just want to know more about that. How do they best reach out to you? Uh, yeah. Uh, Instagram is probably the easiest one. It's what I'm on most of the time. So it's Cody Anderson two underscore three, four. Um, it's the main handle. And then, uh, if you want to follow my shooting stuff, <laughs> Cody Anderson <laughs> dot shoots. Um, so hopefully in some more content on that, the more I compete in this tactical game stuff, but yeah, Instagram probably the best way if anybody wants to reach out. Perfect. Well, buddy, thank you so much for, again, just accepting a cold call invitation to hop onto this podcast. And uh, I'll definitely be following you on that secondary Instagram page. And uh, excited to see what God does with you next, bro. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <clears throat>